Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about using uh, a username and password to log in to your Wi-Fi through a service called RADIUS. Now RADIUS stands for Remote Authentica Authentication Dial-In User Service. And what that does is it causes you to uh, users who want to use your Wi-Fi on your network will have to use the username and password that you've given them within your server and so your server then uh, serves as an authenticator to make sure that only the people you want to allow on your network are allowed to log in so what that does is that uh, creates a higher level of security so that rather than having just one username and password for the entire network that everybody just shares to get onto your Wi-Fi network, individual users would have to authenticate by their user settings that are inside your server. Now for home users this might not be too big of a deal. Uh, usually you're confined to your household. You have a finite number of users. You know who has your username and password. So that level of security isn't necessarily uh, as important to you. But for those that might be in a small business uh, where they have different people coming and going, uh, it adds just an extra level of protection that could make uh, all of that worth it. Now before I uh, enable the service here, what I want to do is just go to the airport utility and I just want to show you inside the airport utility uh, how this looks. Uh, you can see right now on my airport uh, extreme I've got WPA2 personal uh, level of security. Uh, if I just click this uh, you see that we have an enterprise version as well. And so what this is going to do uh, with RADIUS is add an enterprise uh, level of security. In fact if I just click on this right now just to give you uh, you know a feel for it uh, you can see that it'll take me into uh, a setup for RADIUS where if I had a different RADIUS server I could put the information in here and that would control uh, my airport extreme. Uh, so what we'll see is a lot of these settings will take place once I enable the service. So I'm just going to uh, put that down. You can see here it says configure RADIUS. Uh, I'm just going to put it back to uh, where it was so everything's set up the same way. And I'm just going to pop that down for a second. Uh, in fact I'm just going to let me cancel this. I'm not going to update, uh, so that way we can see what happens uh, when we get this set and rolling. So within the server application, you want to come into your sidebar here, and if you've got an Airport Extreme base station, you're going to see it on the side. You're going to want to click that. Now, this uh, automatic setup for RADIUS is only available if you have an Airport Extreme base station. Uh, it doesn't show up for the other routers because those won't show up in the sidebar here so those individual routers would have to be configured differently and you'd have to set up the service uh, separately using the terminal uh, which maybe I'll do in a future screencast but not uh, for this one today so all I need to do is click this little uh, setting right here and as soon as I click that you can see it says I need to restart the airport to apply the settings and that's because it's going to make those changes for us so I'm gonna do that right now let's just restart this and you can see that it's working to apply the settings right now and my base station is restarting. So what I'm going to do is let that restart and when it's finished restarting I'm going to come back and we're going to take a look at what this looks like once the RADIUS server is running. Okay my router rebooted and here we are back on the screen. You can see nothing looks different other than I've got the uh, check mark up here. Uh, one of the things I did discover is you can't have the airport utility running when you're trying to do the reboot or the, uh, the router hangs and so you need to make sure you shut down airport utility when you do that and then everything should work fine. So as I can see uh, it's up and running but I don't have any indication for sure. Uh, so let's do this. Let's take a look at the airport utility and you can see that it did change it. It's changed it to enterprise. It's got the configure radius button. If I actually click that you can see it's added in my uh, radius server IP which is going to be the IP address of my server itself. Okay so let's put that in there and then a shared secret and then the port numbers and so the ports are open and everything's ready to go. It does allow you to put a secondary radius server in there if you need one if you're an enterprise or something like that uh, but for my purposes I just have one so I'm just going to cancel that and it looks like everything is fine uh, on here so I'm just going to let me just cancel and uh, let me just shut this down. Now one of the things we've got to see now is how then do you connect a client to it and how does that look different and so what I did is I've got a screen share here uh, of a laptop on my network and so now that I'm in this screen share you can see uh, up here I've got uh, my actual internet and if I scan for that internet you can see oops you can see here uh, so here's my network it's got a lock on it so I'm gonna click that and as soon as I do you can see that it comes up asking for uh, credentials for my uh, network so what you would do there here is then just put in your username and password uh, that you have on the server uh, 
And so in this case, you can use your short name or your um, long name. It doesn't matter. And let me just uh, plug that in right here. Hang on one second. And then as soon as that's done, it should allow me to connect. And so now it's connecting to my server. And as you can see, now I'm connected to the Internet. And it's got me up here. I'm on the Internet. It's authenticated and everything's good. So as you can see, what that does is it allows you to control who's connected to your network. And uh, what I want to do here, let me just uh, pop this down. It takes us back here. So as you can see, it gives you a good way to be able to connect to your network in a more secure way that uses the WPA Enterprise Standards. Like I said, if you're a home user, you probably don't need to use this. Uh, but for those of you that are concerned with security because you have multiple users coming in and out and you want to be able to control them through your open directory, it uh, does work pretty well. Uh, there are a few things that there are some uh, hitches in. Uh, if you've got older Apple TVs and things like that, you might have problems connecting them after you've made this change. Uh, but if you need to revert back, you can always uh, uncheck this, have it restart, and it will uh, put everything back the way it was before. Uh, one more thing that I do want to show you uh, before I go, for those of you that do want to use Radius and want to administrate it and you want a little bit more of, uh, of some control over it and taking a look at it without having to use the uh, terminal interface to get more into it. As you can see, there's not a lot to look at here. Uh, there's a, a new application that I found on the Mac App Store here called Admin Tool Radius. Uh, it's basically $1.99, so it's pretty, pretty cheap, but it actually shows you more of the uh, insides of this. So let me just pull that up for you so you can just see it. Uh, let me pull that up right here. And so once you launch the application, you put in your server address and your login and password. And so I'm going to do that right now. And then your login, you got to put in your short name. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't take the long name, so you need to put the short name in there. And then your password of someone who can administrate it. And then you click Connect. And then what it does is it actually uh, shows you the actual servers that you've got connected. So you can see here I've got my uh, particular server here. Uh, with my airport base station. It even shows the secret, the shared secret that's supposed to be on there that I showed you on the base station itself. Uh, that's the key that got generated. Uh, you can pick a certificate if you want to uh, off this list. It allows you to do that. In fact, if I just do a drop down, you got a server fallback, those kinds of things, or no certificate. Uh, remember, it does use SSL encryption. That's why that's there. Uh, you've also got the ability to view uh, the logs, and so the logs specific to Radius, uh, you can see those right inside this application as well. So, so you can see what's going right, what's going wrong, those kinds of things. Uh, it also allows you to add uh, some other Radius features. Uh, if you click the plus button here, uh, you can put in uh, other different types of Radius servers. One's for Cisco. Uh, it's got, you know, again, it's built for enterprise, this, this application. So it allows you to look at different ones that are available that you can set up through this particular uh, interface here. That just, again, gives it a nice, uh, you know, front end to it as opposed to having to use terminal. So that just came out. That was something that I thought I'd show you that you might be interested in. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.